guys, welcome back to a new video. So today I'm going to talk about uh, my life within living in a program and my roommates and how that was for me. I think it's a very good topic to talk about. I'm going to try to see if I can just on here. So, um, so I was at a program um, in New Haven. Sorry, I'm just trying to think what I want to say before I say it, so I'm very careful with my words. Um, so I was in a program for almost two years and a half in New Haven, and I had a couple of roommates. There were guys and girls, and it was, it was very difficult, actually. It was not the best environment for me. Um, a lot of the staff there was very mean and very manipulated, manipulative, um, and my roommates were absolutely horrible. They were bullying me a lot, especially the girls. The girls were, they hated me, even though I was really just doing my own thing. I didn't really actually participate in, in actual, like, games. Like, like I didn't participate in the drama. I didn't really participate in the, the, you know, the popular, the being popular, I guess. Um, I just kind of did my own thing, you know, be in my room, listen to music, probably, you know, play with my animals go out for a walk you know I kind of stayed to myself but you know there was some drama at the house and a lot of times I didn't know how to deal with it so I did cut myself a lot and you know luckily I don't cut myself anymore which is good so I, I got over that issue um yeah a lot of the girls did not like me there and you know, it's not that, you know, we couldn't work it out. It was that just they were not on my level. They were very mature. They were all into the drama. They were all two-faced. They always like to switch up, switch up on people very easily. And I noticed it. And, you know, they would hurt me and betray me so many times. And, you know, I knew that if I tried to fight them that I would go to jail. And that actually did happen with one of my roommates. You know, that she, I felt very disrespected to her, from her, and I lashed out and I attacked her, but unfortunately that didn't end very well for me because I did get arrested and I went to a holding cell for a day and I had to go to court for a couple times just to clear my name and to say, you know, it was an accident. So they did drop the charges and from there I learned like you cannot put your hands on people. But you know, there's they were there was other roommates that would do the same thing that I did and they were let off with a warning. And a lot of the times the staff there would favor other clients than others. There were always favoritism in the house. And, you know, I didn't know how to live with other people because before I moved to this program in New Haven I lived in a foster home for three years and I was the only child. So, you know, coming from an environment with you, you being the only child to a, you know, a place where there are other people, it, it was a very hard um, trans transition for me. So, of course, you know, probably in the first year I was freaking out a lot. I was causing trouble. I was very aggressive with a lot of the people there. Because, you know, no one really made me, um, no one really prepared me to be in a group home. I mean, it, it was a group home. And, you know, I had to go there blindly and kind of figure things out on my, on my own. And, um, it was, it was hard. It was definitely hard. But, you know, I did fell into temptation. You know, I did have sex with some of them. But it was only because I was an easy target. You know, I was very in, in, inter like I was a very um like a, I was a lone wolf so of course I was targeted for men to use me and the girls to harass me bully me come at me like I've had a roommate that was very physically violent and she hit me like was actually punching me on my back and I actually had back surgery maybe that year and thank God she didn't do a lot of damage on my spine, but it was scary because, you know, she could have really damaged my back and I would have been paralyzed because, because you know, I, I have um, scoliosis, so I had my surgery to correct it and I was healing from it and this girl apparently just didn't care and she just targeted me and thank god like I said no damage at all I did feel pretty sore but my nerves and 
ribs and all that was fine. Um, but I, I definitely learned my lesson not to really piss them off. But after I left that program, it I went to another one. It was like a 12 hour. So the New Haven one that I went to, it was a 24 hour. And then I kind of graduated and then I went to a, like a 12 hour. So it's like cut. It was kind of like a step up to a more independent place. And that place was okay. Um, it was definitely with older females. It was only girls, which was good, I guess, because maybe they knew my history of having sex and they're like, yeah, we're not going to do that again. Um, I'm not sure if that was the reason or if it was just the next opening spot for me. Um, it could have been both. Who knows? So my other roommates were all females. Um, they were like in their 30s. I was the youngest there. And one of my roommates, she had schizophrenia. And she was kind of scary because she would literally be screaming and talking to herself and just causing problems because she hears voices in her in her head. And she would go to the hospital like almost every day. And it she just had this vibe that, you know, don't mess with her. So, you know, she was very nice to me. Um, I had no issues with her. But, you know, my other roommate, she wasn't so nice. Um, she was always, she was hitting on me actually because she was a lesbian and her girlfriend was living there too. And I guess her and her girlfriend broke up and then she started hitting on me like very easily that she was hitting on me. And it made me feel very uncomfortable because I'm like, I'm not like that. You know, I'm not into like, I, I am bisexual, but you know, I wasn't into her because you know, she wasn't my type. And, you know, at the time I was dating someone, so I wasn't single either. Um, and my roommates, um, they did not like my boyfriend. They, every time he came over to pick me up, he, they would just give him the, the like, the evil eye. They would just stare at him and I don't know why. Maybe they were jealous that, you know, I got a man and they didn't. I don't know. Really hard to say, but... I definitely noticed that pattern that they were not happy when he came over. But, you know, he wasn't there to stay overnight. He was just there to pick me up and we would go do something for the day or for the weekend, whatever. Um, so after that, I actually got kicked out of that program only because, you know, I wasn't doing what I, wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. And that was kind of bullshit because... You know, I am more independent than most of these people that I've lived with. You know, I, I already kind of knew that I was very independent and I like to be on my own. I don't want to be babied and have someone hold my hand all the time. I hate that. You know, it's, it's, you're never going to get far in life if you do that. If you always need, like, it's okay to have help. But if you're, you know, if you're not wanting to do things on your own, you know, while you get older and you're just always trying to have someone do everything for you, that's just not okay, I guess. It's just, you know, it's not, it's not going to do well for you, you know, and I get it. A lot of people are scared of being independent. I definitely was, but the reward of being independent and having your own place is so much better than whatever else you could po possibly think of, you know? So yeah, I met my goal and, you know, I live on my own now, and I love my my apartment. Um, so yeah, that was kind of like most of my life. I was in programs, but I graduated. And, you know, like I said, I did get kicked out of the second program only because, like I said, I was more independent, and I didn't feel like this program was going to help me in the way I wanted to. So I had moved in with my ex-boyfriend at the time, and that didn't go well, as I talked about him in previous videos. Um, and I definitely learned that lesson is that, you know, don't move in to people. Don't move in with people too quickly because when it comes to finances and you guys are kind of sharing bills or sharing rent, it, it can get very messy. And I've definitely learned that, um, you know, especially... You know, it just wasn't a good fit in that relationship, and that's okay. Um, honestly, you know, he did save me from being homeless because if it wasn't for him to take me in, um, I would have been homeless. And um, not that, you know, I probably would have been homeless because, you know, I did have a team that would probably maybe try to help me out so I don't be on the streets, you know. But I didn't really know how that would look and how much time I had because apparently they were trying to kick me out 
um, in this in January, not this January, but like two years ago, and. I just kind of was like, you know what? I'm just gonna live with my boyfriend just because I wasn't. I was scared to 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 think that I would be on the streets. So I kind of just that was my only option, you know, not to be homeless is to move in with him. So I didn't really have much of an option because I was too independent to go back to those other programs. I didn't need those type of services anymore. So the only thing I had was to move forward, and I did. Um, and that's okay, you know, it's a learning experience and, you know, a lot of times when you do get your own place, especially if you're starting out, you you definitely have to have a roommate. I uh, I definitely have will say that when you have your first apartment, if you don't have a job like I do and you're only doing like SSI or SSDI, it's good to have a roommate until you can get more stable on your feet and you actually know that you can pay your own bills. Um, so I think, you know, that was also a good thing transition even though it was more of a relationship with me and my ex it was definitely a good tool to learn how to live with a roommate how to pay my own bills and how to coexist with someone because I know a lot of my friends they don't live on their own like I do they have a roommate that they need to split their rent and share their bills because yes rent in Connecticut is very expensive it's very rare if you see a place that's like under $600, you know, and if you don't have a job like I do, you know, you're going to have to somehow live with other people until you can actually live on your own. And there's nothing wrong with that. There really isn't. It's it's a good way to, you know, see what you can do and what you can do, like what works for you in a sense. Um, so that's it for this video. So it's not a lot, but I definitely wanted to maybe, you know, talk about, you know, where I've been, where I lived at, how did I deal with it. Um, and I, I, I definitely want this channel to, you know, cover my life story, you know, little sections of my life that m some people may not even know about. And that's okay. You know, this is what this channel is about. Um, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any good things to say. So I'll see you next time. Thanks.